time we will have another selection from the bishop's celebration.
we receive the Honorable Bishop Ronald L. Young, our speaker at this time. Let's receive him by saying, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Please be seated. I want to certainly honor God and as I say so often, he's not simply the first in my life, he is my life. I honor the diocesan of the Indiana State Council, the ADSA, the Honorable Bishop Charles Sims. I honor the Honorable Bishop Charles Bunnell and Bishop uh, Townsend. God bless you and all of our ministers that are present here today and I honor the angel of this house and the honorable pastor Juan Sanchez and the first lady young today. I come because I'm affectionately always referred to as Uncle Rodney. <laughs> this family has meant so much to me. Bishop Greg uh, was not only treasure, he was my predecessor as state young people's president and my mentor. Uh, he taught me I was so new in the state. And he knew Bishop Oscar San Kilton Sanders as well as anybody. And my first council in the ADSA, I was with my pastor, Bishop Golder. Bishop Sanders was teaching a class. <laughs> And he made some profound statements that were medically incorrect. And uh, I leaned over to Bishop Golden and I said, Bishop, that's not right. That's not accurate. And he said, son, just sit still, he'll kill you. <laughs> kept singing and, I, and you all know how. Uh, there are times that uh, I cannot restrain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I stood up and I said, Bishop Sanders, in all due respect, that's not accurate. And I went through my explanation. And he, you know, he's about five foot five. He looked down at me and he said, boy, I'm at the top of the ladder. You're on your way up and I'll break your back. <laughs> I eased back in my seat and Mr. Golder said, didn't I tell you? <laughs> Bishop Greg was there. And at the end of that class, he pulled me aside. He said, come here. Anytime you want to deal with Bishop Sanders, Talk to me. Let me intercede for you. I never forgot that. In those seven years I served as state young people's president, he was my mentor. And whenever I had a problem, I'd call him. We were on first name basis. You all I know I say, oh, but I got a problem. What is it, bro? What is it? And I tell him, he said, I'll take care of it. And he'd always keep things really on the mellow side between Bishop Sanders and I. And I made it through seven years. Back bruised, head beat, but I had a shoulder that I could lead on. And I could talk to my brother, and it was all right. He was a tremendous leader. 
I appreciate his mentorship. Um, I appreciated his friendship down through the years. I love this family and they know that. Uh, I've tried every opportunity when they've ever called to respond uh, to them. I've seen my brother go down and bounce back up. Uh, we've had a lot of chats. Uh, I think it was one. Uh, he told me some things too that I can't say over the pulpit. We had that kind of relationship as brothers and as men. I will miss him greatly, but I know this one thing, that what he shared with me, I will take to my grave. Or, if I'm a part of the live and yet remain, I'll take it in the rapture with me. Uh, but to, I'm going to be as brief as I possibly can. I, I've enjoyed the ministry of song. This choir has been awesome. All of the remarks that have been made. That Methodist preacher, is he still here? He had, he had to go back to work. And, uh, Pentecostal apostolic folks got to remember we came from Methodist folks. So it's not unusual for Methodist folks to get stirred up like that. That man was, he was on, he was on target. Amen. So I'm going to speak to you briefly from the 25th chapter of Isaiah. Verse number eight. And I'll just read that one verse. It says, he will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all, all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from all the earth. From all, from all the earth. For the Lord hath spoken it. I just want to share some things about death with you today because I think sometimes we uh, don't understand death for the child of God. Now, first of all, let me say that uh, from the beginning when God created Adam, there was nothing innate in Adam that would cause death. Amen. Death could only be caused by an outside force because there was nothing in him that would cause him to die. And it was the outside influence of our arch enemy Satan that came and deceived Eve. And then brothers like what happened so often times. We can be so in love that we can be easily influenced by that woman that God gave us. It's quiet in here. <laughs> but it wasn't because of Adam's transgression that death was introduced into humanity. Amen. And I want you to understand that the death God spoke of when he told Adam in the day that you eat of that tree, you're going to die. He was not simply talking about physical death because spiritual death began in Adam immediately and he was separated from God. And the that's the thing that we have to understand, that the real death is that separation from God. What we see here is a transition from earthly life to eternal life. It is not the death that we ought to be overly concerned about. Because the Bible says that it is once appointed to man to die and then to judgment. What we ought to be concerned about is that death that will separate us eternally and everlasting from God. 
But thanks be to God that even this death, God has already taken care of. Amen. Thanks be to God that the child of God today, who is born again, who is in Christ and has Christ in them, uh, does not have to fear or abhor uh, the experience of transitioning uh, from this life into everlasting life. And the reason why is because God took care of that, amen, through the person of Jesus Christ. Can I just speak, amen, for a few minutes here? I, I, I think death, amen, had begun to reign, amen, from the time of Adam. And, uh, amen, death had control. Death could not cut basically at anybody's door, and they had to answer it. Uh, but thanks be to God when he came to Jesus. Uh, amen. Jesus began to deal with death first. Uh, amen. With Darius' daughter. He walked in and she had just died. And Jesus walked in and put everybody out and gave her mouth to mouth resuscitation and raised her up uh, and gave her back. And death got nervous. Uh, amen. But Jesus said, I'm not through with you. And death said, I'm not through either. I, Amen. So death come by and the widow of Nain's son had died and they had had the funeral and they were on their way to the cemetery and Jesus stopped the procession and reached in and raised him up and gave him back to his mother and death said something going on here. Amen. He said what's going to happen when I go by and visit uh, Amen. Jesus' friend's house. So he stopped by Martha and Mary and Lazarus' house. Uh, amen. And took Lazarus and he was dead. Uh, amen. For four days when Jesus came by. Uh, amen. Martha and Mary said, Master, uh, if you had been here, uh, our brother would not have died. Uh, Jesus said, Baby, y'all don't know who you're talking to. Uh, amen. They said, Well, we know we're going to see him in the resurrection. Uh, he said, But I am. The resurrection and the life. Uh, he that believeth in me, he that liveth and believeth in me, uh, shall never die. Uh, amen. And he said, show me where you laid him. Uh, they took him out to Lazarus' grave. Uh, and the Bible said Jesus wept. Uh, he didn't die. Uh, he didn't cry. Uh, because Lazarus was dead, uh, he knew what he was going to do. Uh, he cried because he didn't want to bring Lazarus back uh, to go through the hell a second time. Uh, so he just said, Lazarus, uh, come forth. Uh, amen. Lazarus came up bound, uh, hand and foot. He said, loose uh, the man and let him go. Uh, amen. Satan and death. Uh, amen. Really got upset. Uh, they said, what's going to happen uh, when I go by Jesus' house? Uh, so they came by uh, and knocked at his door. Uh, he stepped to the door, uh, snatched death in the collar, uh, and said, I give you a four-point uh, ultimatum. Uh, number one, uh, no man uh, takes my life. Uh, I lay it down, uh, and if I lay it down, uh, I got... Uh, will destroy my flesh. Uh, number three, uh, well, I'm only going to stay there uh, 72 hours. Uh, and number four, uh, when I get up, uh, I'm getting up with all, with all power in my hand. Uh, Jeff got shook up. Uh, amen. But Jesus uh, kept his word uh, on the cross. Uh, when he knew that all things uh, had been fulfilled, uh, he shouted with a loud voice uh, and gave up uh, the ghost. Uh, nobody killed him. Uh, nobody took his life. Uh, he laid it down. Uh, he went to the grave. Uh, but the day passed uh, and nothing happened. Uh, two days passed. Uh, happened. Uh, two days and a half uh, and nothing happened. Uh, Sixty hours uh, and nothing happened. Uh, Seventy hours uh, and nothing
nothing happened. Uh, 71 uh, and nothing happened. Uh, but at 72 hours, uh, Jesus got uh, up, uh, looked back, uh, said, oh, death. Uh, where's your strength? Oh, way. Uh, where's your victory? Uh, I took the sting uh, out of death. Uh, that's why uh, he could sit up uh, and say, just let me see my honey, because uh, I'm ready. Uh, the sting was gone. Uh, the power was gone. Uh, he looked back at the grave uh, and said, oh, grave, where is your victory? I swallowed death and the grave. And now, uh, hey man, he that believeth in me uh, shall never die. Uh, hey man, hope on El Greg uh, is not dead. Uh, he is asleep. Uh, but if the Lord in the morning, touch your neighbor to in the morning. Tell your neighbor they can't keep him back. In the morning, when the trump shall sound, when God himself shall descend with a shout, and the voice of an archangel, when the dead in Christ shall arise, touch your neighbor right quick and tell him Bishop is going to be there. He's going to rise in his own order. Is coming back for him. Jesus is going to award him. Jesus is going to give him that they long for everlasting life before death can hold him. No, no. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. I got to wind up here. But I just come to tell you, death don't scare me. Death don't frighten me. When death comes by, I'm just going to tell death, welcome. Because you're providing for me a transition to be with my God. This man lived. Amen. This life, uh, so he could live uh, uh, forever. Uh, and the family ought to shout, uh, Julie. Uh, that's why you can dance, uh, Andrea. Uh, that's why you can praise him, uh, Debbie. Uh, that's why you can wave your hand uh, with a smile on your face, uh, Mary Ann. Uh, thank God. Uh, for 60 plus years of love and life, came and be encouraged. Kevin keep preaching. Grandchildren keep praising him. His legacy lives. His legacy lives because Jesus took care of them. And I'm just gonna shout. I can face tomorrow because he lives. My fear is gone because I know who holds tomorrow. My life is worth living just because he lives. Pastor, he poured into you. Thank God. Let me just say this quickly. I thank God for his wisdom. He inspired me. How long ago was it that I came to install you? Three years. And I admire the wisdom of the man to pass the mantle on. 
preachers, y'all tighten your seatbelts. Because I just want to tell y'all, you don't have to die in the pulpit. We've got to come to the place where we, where we realize our season for pastoring is over. And be willing to pass the mantle on to young men that can carry it on. And son, I expect this church to grow exponentially because of what he poured in you and what God has given you. You ought to do more. I wish I had a witness here. Pastors are not to be envious and jealous when their successors take the church a little bit higher. We ought to thank God. We ought to give God some praise when our successors who we poured into and who we, amen, shared with, they take it a little higher. Everybody ought to take things a little bit higher. Every successor ought to take everything a little bit higher. But thanks be to God he poured into you, son. I just want you to know you got a fine mission. He's a, he was my successor as state young people's president. He's an old man now. But he's wise. You got someone that will counsel. You got a fine council chairman that will work with you, that will help you. Julie, you're blessed to have women of God who have gone through years that will be there to support you. And I just want you to know Uncle Ronnie will always be there for you. Thank you, family, for allowing me to share this time with you. I love you. I'm praying for you. Amen. Mary Ann, Rose and I, we won't forget you. Your friendship with my wife, Mary Ann and my wife were friends before I knew her. And they brought me in to the friendship. Amen. And I love her. I appreciate her. And God bless you. I turn you back into the hands of the Honorable Bishop Charles.